All right, among the many threats to U.S. national security is brazen intimidation by nation states or their proxies. Now, we've seen this over the past year with the secret Chinese police stations on U.S. soil, as well as the Iranian regime's efforts against former U.S. officials. Now, to address transnational oppression in the United States, the House Homeland Security Subcommittee on Counterterrorism, Law Enforcement, Intelligence held a hearing yesterday titled Safeguarding Dissident Voices. And uh, Bob Fu, Family Research Council Senior Fellow for International Religious Freedom, testified before the subcommittee, and he joins me now in studio. Bob, welcome back to the studio. Thank you, Tony, for having me. Happy New Year. In New York. Okay, let's uh, let's talk about uh, yesterday's hearing. You testified regarding the Chinese Communist Party's repression of religious freedom, and it's interesting. During my time on the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, as I was having conversations, primarily with Uyghurs who were here in the United States, they were fearful of the Chinese government and the agents that they have on this soil. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the uh, while the Communist Party has really persecuted against uh, religious minorities, uh, you know, uh, Uyghurs, uh, Christians, Tibetans, to the worst level we have not seen in 40 years. And uh, their transnational repression effort has also grown rapidly uh, in the past few years. I mean, not only uh, they are, you know, engaging uh, brutal, even kidnapping, you know, from Thailand uh, right. to, yeah, uh, I mean, but also in the U.S., of course. So let's talk about yeah. what, what's happening here in the United States when it comes to uh, those who have fled to this country for, mm -hmm. for freedom, how China, the, the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, what are they doing to them here? Oh, the CCP has uh, uh, used its uh, agents and uh, used its uh, hired thugs uh, by engaging like a physical uh, intimidation, harassment to uh, what we call the, you know, swatting and, uh, yeah. and cyber uh, threats. And, and, and demonstrating in front of people's houses? Yeah, like in my like, in like front in of your my case, house. Yeah, like many. For, for over a month? Uh, yeah, over, I mean, uh, two months. Over yeah. two months, uh, my wife and I and our whole family had to be evacuated by the FBI and the local law enforcement. But not everybody has the benefit of, uh, of federal protection. So you've got, uh, in, in, there's so much fear among those who are here in the United States when they have these Chinese agents pursuing them. Yeah, the only purpose of the CCP is to silence all these voices, these uh, uh, dissident voices in American soil. I mean, we have a, a, I'm a friend who was a former Tiananmen Square student leader in California, and, and he has a very popular uh, uh, show on the YouTube, critical of the Communist Party, basically, um, when his house was also being besieged preventing his two children from going to school. And you know, when he reported to the California police and the police knocked his door and said, sir, the so-called protester said, if you shut down your YouTube and uh, be silent, they will leave. That's amazing. Very clear. It's, 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 it's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Um, so what was the outcome in yesterday's hearing? What, uh, what else took place? I hope, I mean, with that uh, bipartisan approach uh, led so by there was, there, Chairman Fluger. There was yeah, bipartisan sides. concern yeah. but, but from both parties. Yes. They yes. recognize there's a problem. They do, okay. yeah. I think uh, both sides of the aisle uh, recognize that. Um, but I did point out, um, you know, my first recommendation is uh, to have the DOJ restore the Trump administration's policy called the China Initiative. That basically giving the law enforcement the sufficient tool to specifically, um, you know, sort out and target on those uh, perpetrators of the CCP's transnational repression. But uh, almost uh, really a month after this administration came to power, and mysteriously that initiative was canceled. That was a uh, very bad decision. 
Yeah, we that is a whole other topic as to the connections between this administration and, and, and CCP China. one that yeah, wrong. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bob, we just got about a minute left. I, I want to ask you about, uh, la in fact, last time we were together, it was a, a dinner with Taiwanese officials. The, uh, the, the chairman of the parliament uh, was with us. We had dinner. And the, over this past weekend, the Taiwanese people went to the polls overwhelmingly electing a pro-independence, pro-democracy party, William Lai. Um, your thoughts on that? Yeah, both William Lai and uh, Ambassador B. K. Shaw, with whom you had dinner too, uh, they won uh, this uh, election. That's a direct rebuke to Beijing by the Taiwanese people. Because They're not backing down. They're not being intimidated by China, are they? No. I mean, uh, despite of their military threats, you know, airplane. Well, why is that? In, did, they, did, they see the, did they see more than we do the value of freedom? Because they live in the shadow of communist China. Oh, they appreciate every day, you know, the kind of freedom uh, under the shadow of a communist threats um, every day. Um, they want to appreciate that. They want to say no to the CCP's, uh, uh, you know, pressure and um, uh, threats. So I think that's why, um, against all odds, I mean, the CCP did not even... Uh, shy, I mean, kind of hide their preference right. to the pro-Beijing candidates, and yet they elected William Lai. Uh, final question, Bob. Uh, we're up against this break, but do, do, and I know you work very closely with our Taiwanese friends. Do they feel like America I is reliable in this uh, standoff with China? I think uh, both of uh, the the, uh, the president William elect William Lai and VP elect uh, Ambassador Xiao are um, pro you know uh, universal value American yeah. you know nism uh, the candidates and uh, they were actually both uh, like you sanctioned by right I know I know that, I'm, I'm in the part we, the we started club, we started know. a club that's oh, right yeah. well I appreciate their courage and I appreciate yours as well thanks so much for joining me thank you for having me.